Welcome to a Degenerate Friday edition of the Morning Briefing. I'm Jeff DeForest, along with Mike Luby Lubitz. Very happy to have you with us here on NoFilter.net. Appreciate all the people that are tuning in. Uh, things seems to be gathering some steam, especially when we can uh, execute one as we did yesterday. Now, uh, today, there's a little bit of a lesson for the degenerates. Uh, not, not that we're here to teach you anything. We're certainly not preaching. Uh, we're not going to get up on some soapbox and say, that we have the solution to all of your degenerate gambling problems. So we certainly don't, especially if you followed our advice on yesterday's program where we were suggesting to people that they go ahead and lay three and a hook at the time with the Chicago Bears. Now, that oh. line eventually moved, and it became a three-point line. So the game ultimately ended up in a push. But the lesson that was in there is know what you're betting on. <laughs> we alluded to this many times, Libby, and you're well aware of it from meeting the various people, uh, friends and acquaintances in my circle uh, of uh, social dealings. And uh, that's mostly been uh, at racetracks, uh, sports books, and casinos. And uh, we're all fueled by self-sabotage. And at the same time, it, you should be aware uh, of what you're, you're betting on. Are, are you, uh, it brings out the lowest level of depravity in terms of desperation. And uh, that was the case last night as people were laying money out in the Chicago Bears game, where they're taking on the Carolina Panthers, the Bears came into the game 3-5-1 and one against the spread. The Panthers were 1-6-1. and one. And you have to ask yourself, what on earth? I mean, at the time, did this not look like a good move, Luby, where the deal was made and the Chicago Bears, uh, gone, they abdicated the number one overall pick. They dropped down to number nine, eventually traded that pick and became – uh, the uh, team selecting 10th. Uh, they felt they didn't need a quarterback necessarily among the guys that were coming out. You, you had uh, guys at the top of the list. Three of the top four picks were, were quarterbacks. And so there was reason to want to be there. Uh, did they have a belief in Justin Fields, you think, at that point, where they felt comfortable that they didn't need any of these rookie quarterbacks that were coming in, especially not Bryce Young, who the Carolina Panthers were desperate to grab and when you look at what they traded, I mean, did, did you ever get a look at the entire list? They, they had it up on a graphic last night. Uh, for Bryce Young, who went to Carolina as the number one overall pick, the Bears had the number one pick. They got the ninth pick overall, which they turned into additional picks by dropping down to number 10. Now, that ninth pick was Jalen Carter of the Eagles. You might oh, have Jesus. Perhaps they whiffed on that. They did uh, draft an offensive tackle, which was maybe a position of bigger need. I mean, it, it, and they got a guy named Darnell Wright. And I would imagine the jury is still out as to whether or not uh, he's going to turn into uh, somebody of the value of any of the guys that were taken ahead of him, including uh, Jalen Carter of the Philadelphia Eagles. They got a second round pick, which uh, they drafted a cornerback, a guy named Tyreek Stevenson. They also he... have Carolina's 2024 unconditional. This isn't the NBA. So uh, you get their first round pick, oh, which right now, now will be the number two pick. But uh, it appears they'll be very much in contention with a couple of other horrible teams for the number one overall pick. So if they wanted a quarterback, who would you rather have right now? Bryce Young, from what we've seen, which he, he was under just a bizarre attack last night. Was Buddy Ryan on the sidelines there? Did they dig him up from the grave? Because they blitzed on every play after a while. They just said, this guy is a statue in there. They may as well have dug up Johnny Unitas to play quarterback. Uh, he's not going anywhere. Had a couple of good runs early in the game, but the Bears defense eventually stifled. Bryce Young held the Carolina offense to two stinking field goals. The under players were doing the Kazatsky in the first quarter of this contest. And, uh, and, then, and you look at it, they may be in a position to draft Caleb Williams which I would think that if they had that opportunity, they might say sayonara to Justin Fields at that point and, and be willing maybe to even get something of quality for him if there are teams in the league. I mean, look what's going on at the quarterback position. Ten rookies starting this year, including Tommy DeVito, who uh, had a little stint at Syracuse and then eventually went to Illinois, and uh, nobody knew that he was in the league until he surfaced uh, a couple of weeks ago and was on the field playing for the New York Giants who would not allow this man to throw the football. So uh, what chance do they have uh, in their game this week? But that is the 10th rookie quarterback to start this year. And you would say that while, while there has been some evidence that maybe a couple of these guys would be really good, uh, including C.J. Stroud, I guess Will Levis also uh, surprising people, uh, that there's a lot of evidence that uh, some GMs uh, should take a, a very serious look at their contract 
and uh, see if, if there's any way to avoid that thing going into the shredder because uh, huge mistakes that might have been made. But anyway, you have to know what you're betting on. I mean, last night, uh, unders have been prevailing in the National Football League. That has been uh, more than a trend. Uh, it's an overwhelming number of unders, and the totals have been adjusted to uh, where, I mean, would you tune in a game if you were thinking, wow, between these two teams, they might get 24 points. <laughs> Are they going to have to adjust the amount of points that you get for a touchdown and a field goal? Pretty soon it's going to be like eight points for a touchdown and uh, four points for a field goal. Just, just I like so the they can make it. What's that? I like that the Panthers Bears was 36 and it went under. <laughs> under, easy. Not even a under threat. 36. Guys were popping down Perignon in the middle of the second quarter going, can you believe this trick? <laughs> See, it reminds me, though, if you were betting this game, and I didn't have a little action on the game, uh, I thought the line was Fugazi that the guy gave me because everywhere that I looked, I saw the Bears were three and a half. They yeah. must have been some kind of push. Hey, low, we got another one once the Panthers, where the Panthers dropped and the line became three, and the game uh, was uneventful at that point because uh, it didn't matter which side you played. You didn't win. Yeah. But at least at least you didn't lose. But sometimes, I mean, you can be badly fooled. I, I remember a time I, I was just getting clobbered in Las Vegas. I was out there covering a fight, and I was in the race book where I tend to spend most of my time. Are, are you ever going to come upstairs so we can go out to dinner? Uh, one more race. <laughs> I don't think there's a single one in my life that didn't hear that and dread to hear the words <laughs> spoken by me. Uh, one more race, then we can go. <laughs> So I'm in there, and I, I'm just getting hammered on this trip. I, I can't win at anything, and I'm down to, you know, like maybe my last 40 bucks that I want to even speculate with that, that I might be able to stage some dramatic comeback, which, uh, you know, would have been as monumental as any comeback uh, that, that was ever uh, waged in, in the history of sports and or degenerate gambling. Uh, buried. I mean, literally, I was spitting up blood. And so I take the last 40 bucks. I figure I, I'm going to have to hammer some exact to here. And I look on the board and I find a combination that looks like it's possible. And I'm thinking just based on the odds alone. And I'm thinking I'll, I'll just bet a $40 exact to one way. And if it comes in, I'm going to get back like six, 700. That'll be a start. And I maybe will have enough money to tip a couple of people when I get to the airport, uh, you know, which was appropriate at the time. You don't do this anymore when you go to the airport, right? You don't tip the guy outside or where they had you, uh, you know, the, you could check in your baggage before you even walked into the place. You give the guy a five, make sure that he put the right city on your bags. Now you go and it literally is like a Don King weighing. <laughs> <laughs> Not only do you have to weigh your bag, you have to be weighed yourself. They check your blood pressure and everything else. And you're thinking, what else do you want from me? A sperm count? <laughs> God sake, Spirit Airlines? So, uh, you know, like a, another thousand dollars to take this bag on because uh, my wife had decided to uh, stuff a bottle of wine in there. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's there like, uh, oh, yeah, it takes out like a bra. You're like, uh, that's not going to do it, man. Get the wine. <laughs> Get rid of the wine. <laughs> Incredible. But I, so I bet this race and uh, it was at like the Sacramento State Fair. It couldn't have been any more of a dirtbag track. It was uh, <laughs> early in the afternoon in California and uh, Nevada. And uh, I'm betting the first race at the Sacramento State Fair. And then as they're going in the gate, and I've got my last $40 on this, and they're going in the gate, I'm looking going, man, those horses have really funny looking ears. And I didn't realize that I had just bet my last 40 bucks on a mule race. <laughs> I have funny looking ears. <laughs> arbitrarily in any different direction. You know, all of a sudden, the one that I bet is uh, on the Ferris wheel. And oh, I'm thinking, how, how did this... Uh, it wasn't a horse. It was a donkey. It's like, I, what an ass I felt like. Literally. Oh, so, uh, know what you're betting on. I mean, if you're, if you're going to bet on this NFL dreck, realize that it is Chicago. That yeah. it is Carolina. These teams are horrible. Yep. I, mean, I don't know that they're in tank mode. I mean, if you were Carolina, would you be tanking for another quarterback if you had spent all of this draft ammunition and players they also gave up uh what turns out to be the bears a top wide receiver that they got a player of uh yes. NFL caliber well, they don't own their pick field. there's nothing to tank for <laughs> like you're tanking to help chicago <laughs> it's the bears chicago. don't have the, the number two and three picks in uh, yes. next year's draft they do this gm i mean if that works that strategy we, we saw the miami dolphins try that and it didn't necessarily equate out to what was going to be a panacea for success although they did uh, then 
transform some of those picks into actual tangible players and talent that's on the field right now, like Tyreek Hill, at what price? I mean, in the long run, will this cost them if they don't win a championship? That's the chance that you have to take. But yeah, I mean, don't bet on a mule race. You don't have to, people. You can hold back a little bit. If you were betting the under in that game, like we said, you felt pretty comfortable the entire time. But if you were betting on Chicago or Carolina to prevail against the point spread, I, I really think that you uh, need to check in with some kind of psychiatric uh, place where you can get some help. There's help out there, people. There's help on the way. I mean, imagine you had money on that Milwaukee Bucks game and they throw Antetokounmpo out. Oh, and you're Jesus. wondering uh, what, what crime family has the goods on that particular official who called two ridiculous tees on Antetokounmpo and had him out of the ball game by the beginning of the third quarter, which uh, quite uh, coincidentally, would you say, Luby, the Bucks are leading by 11. Looked like they're going to cover the 14-point uh, spread rather easily, and they end up hanging on to win by like a point. Exactly. Incredible there. Uh, no investigation forthcoming. Uh, at least uh, we haven't seen that from Adam Silver. All he's worried about is that Fugazi tournament that he's running. Going to try to stimulate interest. Uh, how, how about having a game played on a level with less than 53s per team every night, Adam Silver? But, uh, yeah, uh, know what you're looking at. Try, try to uh, get some idea what, what it is that you're looking at if you're going to be uh, placing a bet. All right, we have to run. Uh, good luck with all of your wagers over the weekend. Uh, we do have some selections for you. Uh, we had a guy that's red hot. If we can do this real quickly here, Luby. Uh, our, our friend, a Greek, who is with us on one of our other shows, uh, is at 28 and 15 on the season, 28 and 15 in documented picks. He has LSU clobbering Florida, laying 14, FSU going ahead and laying the 14, 14 and a half against the University of Miami in an F team, uh, right now. Uh, Michigan, everybody loves Michigan to pound Penn State. I think even you're in agreement on that, and uh, likes the Ravens. The Ravens. I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan, and uh, since we are giving you nothing but losers on the show here, I'm a big fan of the home dog, the Jaguars, against the 49ers. Jaguars getting three points at home against the 49ers, a team that is just slip sliding away, having lost yeah. three in a row. Why can't it be four, people? Why can't it be four? I can. Believe in what you're seeing, and don't bet on things that you have no idea about. There's fucking mules going in there. I mean, uh, really, I, I I knew it right there. I just started eating the tickets like mush had come down and started screaming, come on, grip tonight, come on, grip tonight. For Mike Louie Lewis, you guys have a great weekend. Uh, I hope it's wonderful wherever you are. Uh, I think it's going to be uh, beautiful here in South Florida where we hail from. Thanks for tuning in to the morning briefing. For Mike Louie Lewis, I'm Jeff DeForest. We'll see you next time on nofilter.net. 